Patron Saints of Nothing by Randy Rebe. Page 161, A Complete Waste. I slouch low in the back seat and watch the city pass under the night sky as Tomas drives me to Tita Chattos. It started raining again, so the water runs down the windshield, blurring my view of the orange street lamps, the billboards, the crowded homes, and shuttered storefronts, and empty hall empty stalls along the roadside. The wipers swish back and forth, and the headlights from oncoming traffic light up the interior of our vehicle intermittently. <clears throat> the Beatles are playing over the radio, and Tomas is singing along softly to himself. I'm kicking myself for how weak and submissive I was with my uncle. There's no way he was telling the truth about June, and no way he didn't steal my letters. It kills me to know that they remain behind somewhere in my uncle's house. But he's right about one thing. This isn't my country. It hasn't been since Dad persuaded Mom to return to the U.S. when I was one. Maybe I don't deserve to know about June's life. Maybe I gave up that right when I stopped writing him back, when I let him slip from my thoughts so easily. Who was I to step off the plane and demand anything of this place? Maybe I shouldn't have come here. I should have stayed in Michigan playing video games and completing my spring break homework. I should have accepted the fact that June was dead, and that there was nothing I could do, nothing I should do, about it. Fall would have come, and I would have been in Ann Arbor, secure in my ignorance. Thinking about all of this makes my stomach turn. I start feeling ill, and I'm about to ask Tomas to pull over so I can vomit when my phone starts buzzing. It's Dad. Great. I hit ignore. A few moments later, there's a voicemail. I delete it without listening. Then comes a text. What happened with your uncle? Chetta said you're going there early. I don't respond. Instead, I pull up Mia's number and send her a long text about my argument with my uncle. Only a few moments pass before she replies. No wonder Grace hasn't told him about her and Jessa. Yeah, I don't think he'd be too happy about that. At least we'll be closer now. What do you mean, I ask. Remember I told you that your Tita lives in my village? When Grace visits her, she usually finds some time to sneak away and meet up with Jessa. I smile. Oh. By the way, sorry, but I couldn't find out anything about your cousin today. That's okay, I say. Appreciate the effort. I'll keep trying, she replies. Text tomorrow if you want to meet up. I'll be around. Okay, I will. Magandeng Gabi. That means good night. Magandeng Gabi, Mia. I slip my phone back into my pocket. Three winky face emoji in that exchange. Grace said Mia has a boyfriend, so maybe, maybe they mean something different here. Maybe Filipinos don't use them to flirt. Maybe they, they use emoji like punctuation. I don't know, but I do know my nausea has passed, at least for now. Maybe this trip won't be a complete waste.